Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2022 Latinx Kids Lit Book Festival. My name is Zara Gonzalez Wong, and I am the illustrator of Measuring a Year. Um, and I'm so excited to welcome you today. I have amazing illustrators with me Loris Laura, Tanya de Regil, and Herman Blanco. And um, they're going to introduce themselves to you. But before they do that, we I just want to remind everybody to please read our anti-harassment policy in the chat box somewhere down there or over there, maybe. Um, and now, without further ado, let me introduce our panelists. We'll start with Loris. Uh, Hi. Oh, wait. Sorry. Before yeah. we introduce ourselves, I forgot. <laughs> this is a draw panel. And so in order to make this even harder for everybody, we are going to draw while we're introducing ourselves. So. I am going to draw along with our panelists, um, but we are going to be drawing ourselves, little self portraits of ourselves as, since this is the lungs of our planet, uh, draw off session, we're going to be drawing self portraits of ourselves as our favorite uh, rainforest animal or plant. So with that, take it away, Larissa, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, and let's sure. Let's us start drawing. Hi, I'm Larry Slora. I'm a Southern California um, illustrator, and um, I've done quite a few books. But my latest book is Phenomenal AOC: um, The Roots and the Roots and Rise of Alexandra Ocasio Cortez, and it basically follows her life um, at a young age and the and as she goes through the places and people and events that kind of shaped her um, political career as a, the first, the youngest Congresswoman to serve as a co in Congress in the United States. Awesome. Let me get well, thank, you so me get <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Luris. Um, let's go to Herman. Uh, hi, my name is Herman Blanco, and I am the illustrator of A Monster is Eating This Book. Um, it's good because uh, Halloween is coming, so <laughs> it's very appropriate title. Uh, it's about a, a monster that's eating the the words in the book so we have to read it before we before the monsters eat the whole book uh so yeah uh, very excited to be here awesome well thank you we are super excited to have you and uh tanya do you want to introduce yourself um Tell us a little so bit about your books my name is tanya de regil i'm from mexico city and i'm an author and illustrator and this is my new book. Whoops, there. <laughs> it's something about grandma. And it's a story about a little girl called Julia who goes away for the summer with her grandma for the first time without mom and dad. And soon she discovers that there's something very special about where she lives. And there's even more special um, something about grandma. Uh, so, I hope you can read it and discover what's so special about her. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> I hope you all drew, drew really fast. I'll give you oh a little bit longer and I'll talk about mine since you all had to introduce yourselves while um, you were drawing and I just had to draw. So here we go. Here's mine. I am a leopard because you probably can't see it in the uh, video, but I have freckles, so they're like spots. So I figure I am like a freckled leopard. So now it looks like Erman is done, perhaps. So why yes. don't you tell us a little bit about um, your artwork, your self-portrait? Well, I decided to draw myself as a monkey swinging from a vine. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it goes with my personality because I always <laughs> like to monkey around and uh, I love to do it. I, I love monkeys. I think they're very fun. Fantastic. I love it. I love the action in there too. Uh, Luis, how about you? Yeah. You, you even I were able to add some color. I tried. I did my best to add a little bit of color, but I drew myself as a chameleon because I just love that they kind of um, morph into different colors and color is a big part of my artistic um, personality. And I do headphones because I was like, I'm wearing the red headphones. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> and Tanya. 
Ah, uh, so I also drew myself, well, not as a leopard, as a jaguar. <laughs> so maybe maybe I should have said jaguar. Leopard, <laughs> too late. <laughs> so it's just because I love, I love cats. I love felines. I think they're strong and brave. And maybe I'm not very brave all the time, but I wish I was like a jaguar. <laughs> that that is fantastic <laughs> and super amazing. And um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our Latinx Kidlet Book Festival's YouTube channel because, and if you're a school classroom librarian or educator joining us, please enter our classroom book set giveaway. You can find the links to the entry form somewhere in the chat. Um, so I don't want to forget uh, to tell you all that. And now um, we are going to go on to our next prompt. And I am coming up with these prompts now, but the hope is that in the chat, maybe some of you watching might have some interesting creatures or plants or other things to draw that um, live in the rainforest um, or not, or whatever. Maybe, you know, anything could live in the rainforest, really, like in our imagination. <laughs> So um, feel free to throw out some prompts and then perhaps we will draw them as well. But for now, we will go for a prompt that I came up with, which is draw a creature that no one has ever seen that lives in the rainforest, um, whatever you imagine. And then <laughs> while you're drawing that, um, we'll go with a really super easy question. And also, anybody in the chat, if you have questions, feel free to throw them out there, um, and we'll talk about those while we're trying as well. But here's a, a, a fun one. What would you love to be asked to draw in a book? So let's start with Tanya, since you went last. OK, what would I love we're to draw? We're trying to see uh, rainforest creatures. <laughs> OK, so I would love to draw Oh, that's a very hard question. <laughs> I would love to draw maybe, um, I love drawing people. I love drawing emotions. I love, I love all of that. So maybe um, I would like to draw a very emotional animal <laughs> to change that because I've always drawn uh, people. So now I would love to draw a very, um, yeah, emotional um, like may, maybe a very sad lion or something like that. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Emotional animals. I, I love I love when we make animals seem more human in, in books. I think that's really fun. Okay, um, Larice. Yeah, um, that's a tough question. Um, I would, oh, what would I love to draw? I would, oh my gosh, I just had this. <laughs> Uh, anything with I love drawing animals. I like drawing things in nature. Things in space is, are awesome. I always Ooh. wanted to do a space book. That would be great. So yeah, I think I, I'm gonna go with space actually, just because it sounds very interesting. It hasn't. I've never done anything like that before. That's awesome. Space is such a space is really cool because I mean we know what's in space, but we also kind of don't yeah. know what's in space. So you. You get to use your imagination a lot. For sure. Kind of like Especially what we're like, doing right now. I know. Herman, <laughs> um, do you want to, what would you, what's your like dream drawing uh, thing? I think I would like to draw about bugs. Oh. Uh, I always, I, I love to draw characters. Uh, it's always fun, and and I always love to draw bugs, <laughs> kind of. And um, you know, I, I think someday I would like to draw some maybe a story about a a, a a world of bugs or something like this. I think it would be really fun for me. That's that's awesome. That's <laughs> super fantastic. And yeah. it seems like we have some some students that are drawing in the chat with us. So that's awesome. Um, uh, maybe they are now drawing their their creature that lives in the rainforest. Um, Erman, since you seem like you're done, why don't you tell us a little bit about your creature 
that lives in the rainforest? Uh, my creature is a, a combination of a dolphin <laughs> who has a turtle shell with turtle arms and octopus uh, tentacles for feet so he can go you know like climb trees maybe go on the water have the shell for protection i think it would be very successful in the rainforest but yeah i agree i also mine has some octopus tentacles too just because i love octopus yeah octopi <laughs> and uh drawing lots of arms and legs and stuff uh sounds really fun uh tanya what is that that looks amazing <laughs> so i drew a monkey um i love monkeys although they scare me when when you see them in real life they're a bit scary but i love monkeys and i wanted to do um blue spotted monkey with wings and mm -hmm. a little bit of pink spots as well <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome. <laughs> and Larice, uh Yeah, I kind of went with <laughs> I went with like a kind of ant with like maybe a fire like a glowing ant. So thinking like firefly or like uh, and also with like bat wings. So I was like I don't know, there's something about just having an animal that glows and it has a special trait that yeah really is I, fun. I love that. So what I love about all of these, I do kind of like a I don't know, weird the sort of thing. Um, what I love about all of these is that they could actually exist because, you know, there are so many um, animals in the rainforest that we haven't even discovered yet. I think like something like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to like butcher this, but I, I'm pretty sure that like a lot of the varieties of animals and plants and bugs all, um, live in the rainforest it, just so many that we haven't even dis di discovered yet and also somebody just said that um they look like alebrijas and i think that is mm -hmm. like super awesome uh if anybody doesn't know what they are they're um special magical creatures that um i think come out mostly uh during day of the dead is that right i it, no they can come whenever yeah they they can come whenever <laughs> they're okay, just awesome. like a mixture of many animals together that's awesome <laughs> i i love i love them so much they're usually super colorful um so let us move on and i am going to steal from the um from the chat um and i see that there's a lot of people that are talking about dragons and dinosaurs and frogs and crocodiles so i feel like these um things are um ooh, and then there's another one draw something that you would never find in the race first we'll do that one next right now we're gonna do um some combination of a dinosaur crocodile frog reptile um that is living in the rainforest somewhere maybe let's also draw where it lives does it live in a tree does it live in a under a rock maybe it lives in a rock so let's 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 draw this weird com combination of creatures dinosaur crocodile dragon frog thing um and then while we're drawing that um why don't we chat a little bit about how you all became illustrators? So, Erman, um, let's start with you. How did you become an illustrator? And I'm going to set a timer, but if we go over a little bit, that's okay. okay. <laughs> uh, actually, I always loved to doodle in class. I could never pay attention, so I was always doodling. But I never thought I could uh, do it as a career until I couldn't find a job after, after I graduated from, from school in communication. And, and then I decided to do some graphic design. And from there, I, I realized that I like illustration <laughs> and, and took a chance after years of working as a graphic designer and decided to go for you know drew a, a kids book and from there it just uh it, it opened up uh, some doors for me and now i'm very happy to be able to, to do this for a living that's awesome yeah. that's awesome and actually 
we share similar uh, a similar trajectory because I also went to school for graphic design and found out that actually what I really wanted to be doing was illustration and kind of moved yeah. into that world as well. So I think that that is a, a common um, yeah, you know, for sure. We go into something that we think will make money and then we realize that actually we want to pursue our passions. Um, so let's see, Loris, do you want to yes. tell us um, a little bit about how you became an illustrator? Yeah, so I, all my life I've always loved drawing and just, I was the go-to person in school that just everybody came to, to ask to draw whatever. But um, obviously as I grew up older, I, I started looking into schools and colleges and I went to um, Art Center College of Design in Pasadena and that's where I really found my niche of just really loving drawing illustrations drawing for children's books and even edit in editorial work so it, i do a mixture of all different things but i just love drawing for kids and kids books and things like that so that's awesome. I, I went a very yeah i went a very traditional route with learning how to go learning to, going to school for art and then just finding a career that i that i really enjoyed out of it yeah no that's awesome and um it's cool that you work in in different fields um yeah. as well as as uh, illustrating picture books i think that's that's interesting um and fun because then you get to do something different every day okay sure. tanya how about how about you like how how did you get into this crazy job of making books and illustrating so, it's very similar to all of you <laughs> like i i didn't start thinking, oh, I want to do books for a living because I didn't know I could do that for a living. Um, I, actually, in Mexico, we don't even have uh, the career illustration as a career, um, oh, wow. like in the universities. So for me, it was like, I didn't even know it existed. So mm -hmm. I actually studied fashion design. I wanted to do art, design, whatever. I ended up doing fashion design because I I had done a little bit about that and I ended up doing costume design for a while in movies, which was really fun, but so much work. <laughs> and <laughs> I ended up thinking, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, and I realized that what I loved and always loved was um, children's books. You know, when I, when, when I went to my, my childhood room, I saw that it was filled children's books. So I was like, this is, this is what I should be doing. Um, so from there, I just studied by myself and wherever I could find information. And that's how I ended up doing children's books. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I, I think it's always so interesting to find the paths that people have gone on to, um, to come here because you know, some people like Larisse have gone to art school and some people like me, I didn't go to art school. I just got a degree in graphic design and it sounds like Armand did as well. And Tanya did fashion illustration, um, fashion design. And so like, we've kind of, we, we all like surrounded art, but we didn't necessarily all go through the same um, ways. And I think that's, that's really cool because there's a lot of different ways that you can end up in uh, making picture books. So why don't we quickly show our, our little crack go frog go dino reptiles. <laughs> Tanya, do you want to start? Hey, so my crocodile lives in a tree and he has frog legs and dragon spikes <laughs> because they're blue. And he's kind of like a chameleon because he likes to eat flies or a, or a frog as well. I love the tongue. I love the tongue. Uh, Erman, do you want to go and? Uh, yeah, mine is like a, a dragon frog with a crocodile tail, and it lives on a, on underground on a hole. <laughs> I love it. He looks a little worried. <laughs> Yeah, he has a bad rep, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and Luis? Yeah, so I kind of took the, the head of a crocodile and I included um, like a dragon. He's breathing fire. And then I kind of made the legs into frog legs and added wings. And he lives in like 
Oh, I recently did a crocodile book or a, a thread with the crocodile in it. So I know that they have nests. So I kind of made a um, nest or uh, yeah, nest with the sticks and leaves and I have fire um, kind of in the background as well. I love it. So, so yours is like, <laughs> somewhat true to to nature at least inspired oh, yeah. by the truth of nature uh yeah. mine is living in a tree so i don't know what <laughs> it is it's a frogodile um but um but this was fun so now we're gonna go back to the prompt that was up on the the board um yes draw something that you would never find in a rainforest um because i think that is fun especially because you can really find almost anything in a rainforest so i'm really curious to see what you all will think um that you cannot find in a rainforest and i'm wondering um if we can we have some questions from the um from students that sent them in so i think that maybe we will queue up the first one if that is if that is okay with my there we go from penelope a um in sixth grade from california we're gonna get a little video from her and then we will jump back into answering them and this way you guys will have a little bit of extra time to draw so let's go with the video how do you decide what to draw from the text okay so penelope is asking so when we don't write the checks because a lot of us um illustrate other people's books as well as writing our own potentially how do we decide what we draw from the text um so let's see who started i think we're back to Laris. do you want to start Laris, uh and tell us like how you yeah. decide um what to draw from the text so when I get the text from my art director, I like to kind of read the text over and over and just kind of either circle or write down any kind of keywords that are important, that I think are important to what is being communicated. And I just draw, try to draw that text over and over again until I find the, the best solution that I think works for the story. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, is it ever like, what do you do when you're really stumped and it's hard to, to figure out what to draw? Either I just kind of take a break for a little while or I just kind of um, maybe look through some of my favorite illustrators and kind of just see how they figure out certain solutions and kind of just get inspired by it. So I'll either look through books or even just watch a fa my, one of my favorite movies that I just love and just kind of just let my brain kind of relax and kind of and go through that process. Those are good ideas. Erman, what do you think? What do you do um, when you get a text from an author and you know it's time to figure out what you're gonna draw? How do you, how do you go about doing that? Uh, well, first, panic of course you know you have to stress about it and after <laughs> stressing i think the, the the best thing is to try to put some sort of uh, storyboard like just put uh, the pencil on paper and try to draw uh you know what you see the words and from there you know you you sort of start to uh, develop the idea and and you take out the bad you leave the good and, and little by little you, you you get that confidence that you're doing you know you're getting the best work so for me it's basically just trying to get it done trying to to do to do the work right so it sounds like a lot of um iteration right you try yeah. something it doesn't of, work you try yeah. something else and until <laughs> eventually error, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and tanya i don't i have two of your books but you wrote them both have you actually illustrated anything that somebody else has wrote yes i have um two more books uh, uh, actually so I, two that are hiding i didn't know <laughs> actually one uh, the most recent one I'm very proud of because um, it was for Chelsea Clinton. Oh, so wow. That was like something huge for me. Um, but yeah, it's it's always hard when you, well, no, it's always hard. Even if you're writing the story, it's always hard to, to come up with illustrations. Um, so what I try to do is um, 
I try to think what's going to make the story even richer, uh, what's going to enhance the story. Uh, and what I love about picture books and illustration is that you can actually tell another story in, in the pictures. So that's always fun. I always try to, to find a way that, okay, so it's not exactly what the text says, but this is going to make it even more special. So yeah, like, it's hard. Tell, like trying, trying to find a way to tell a story in pictures that goes with the story in words. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's always, I love books that do that. And I try and do that in my books as well. But that's what, it's so hard to, to figure out how to do that as well. Okay. So now that we've all drawn our thing that doesn't belong in the forest, I went like probably too literal. I made a robot because, you know, it's technology. Technology doesn't belong in a rainforest. Um, what about you, Tanya? What did you, uh, what did you do? So I did a polar bear and, and oh. <laughs> baby polar bears. And one of them is holding a turtle. So hard to see. But they're Very like cute. a little bit lost. They don't know what they're doing there. Um, they're kind of hungry. They don't even know where to start <laughs> looking for food. So hopefully they I imagine find they a friend oh, who sorry, can was, tell them. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say, I imagine they're probably sweating quite a bit too. Yeah. <laughs> um, Luis, what about you? What are the yeah? I kind I kind creatures? of just yeah. I invented my creatures, so I kind of made um, like mushroom jellyfish. So, oh, so, so I figured cute. that would be kind of not in a rainforest at all, or even a real thing. <laughs> uh yes i i would love if a mushroom jellyfish actually existed though because <laughs> mushrooms are cool and jellyfish are awesome so i um whoever makes animals please make those uh, <laughs> <laughs> um Erman, what did what what is this uh creature that you have in here i drew a donkey that uh Lo got lost himself in the rainforest. <laughs> don't quote me. I don't know if there are donkeys in the rainforest, but uh, I feel like they're not. I, you know what? I pre I printed out a bunch of cheat sheets on the rainforest and rainforest animals, and I see no donkeys. So you're probably good. <laughs> so I get the points. <laughs> yes, you get all the points. Good, good. <laughs> okay, so now um, let's. Do, um, let's do an easy drawing. I saw in the chat that somebody wanted us to draw a two-headed dog. Um, seventh grade student in Chelsea, Massachusetts. Uh, yeah, wait. Yeah, I think Massachusetts. Oh, it's Friday. Sorry, my brain is not on. Um, so we're going to draw a two-headed frog. And while we're doing that, I also saw in the chat that somebody was asking, how many years have we drawn? And so um, I, um, I think, let's see, let's start with Erman. Um, so while we, were, we are drawing a two-headed frog, if you want to start out telling us how long you have drawn. Like professionally? Hmm. Uh, I, well, okay, I'll give you two answers. Uh, first answer, I've always doodled, you know, I've always tried to draw whenever I can, you know, even take classes. Um, and professionally, uh, yeah, a couple of years actually, not uh, since 2018, 19. Uh, but, you know, I think you always have to draw you always have to keep on learning you, you never really uh, finish you know but yeah uh, since always basically yeah i mean i think i have a feeling that the that may be the answer that uh everybody gives with with perhaps their own unique variations because i also have been drawing since forever tanya you're not in <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've loved to draw ever since I was a little girl. Professionally, maybe since 
2015 when my first book came out. So that's that's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> and Luis, how about you? Yeah, like everybody else, I've been drawing all my life. Um, but professionally, I've been drawing um, since 2014. So that I think that's about eight years or so. Uh, so yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. I don't even know how long I've been drawing professionally. I mean, what what does that even mean? I mean, because I worked as a graphic designer before I was an illustrator, but I yeah, did true. illustration. So like, I don't know. I guess too, too I guess long. for me, profession yeah, professionally for me is just I guess the, your first paid job. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think know. my first paid job was just a uh, little spot illustration for the Wall Street Journal. Oh, I mean that's not a bad first job. <laughs> yeah no it's not it's pretty it was pretty awesome but it was like i was completely nervous and just like oh no i, I i'm gonna mess up i'm not gonna do a good job but I, it ended up being fine <laughs> i'm sure yeah that's that's awesome um what about Irman and, and tanya do you want to share what your first uh jobs uh were as illustrators that's kind of an interesting uh an interesting uh, thing. If you remember, I mean, I feel like that's also like something that I don't know if I remember. <laughs> well, my first paid job as an illustrator, um, I think it was for a friend who was working something in psychology and they need like expressions, you know, for, for their patients to be like sad, happy. That was like, my first paid <laughs> illustration <laughs> job. It wasn't um, very important or anything, but it made me finally say, okay, I'm a paid illustrator. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That, I mean, it doesn't have to be glamorous, right? I mean, I'm sure that my first, I probably did like a t-shirt design or something like that. How about you, Erban? Uh, yeah, I'm sure there have been jobs like that, but the one that I really consider the turning point for me I, it was the, a children's book. Uh, it was called When Pencil Made a Racer. And I actually did it with a friend from work uh, who wanted to write a children's book. And she was like, oh, you want to illustrate this for me? And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. Thinking it was going to go nowhere. <laughs> In my mind, you know, like stress, but, but I really wanted to take on the challenge, uh, you know, it was almost like a dream that I didn't know I had. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you know, it got published. It was an amazing experience for me. And from then on, I was like, yeah, I'm an illustrator. <laughs> That's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. So essentially, it was like you didn't even wait for, um, uh, for somebody to give you the illustration job. You just, uh, you just went out and took it, basically. And yeah. obviously, you have some fans in the audience as well, because Bell and Medina <laughs> said that they love uh, uh, appreciate your book. It, appreciate yeah. It, yeah. So that's yeah. awesome. And let's just do a quick showing of our two-headed frogs. Um, let's just, yeah, let's just hold them up because I know we're running late, so I don't want to, like, I don't, or not late, but I want to make sure that we get to some more prompts and everything. So um, these are so like funny and sweet and cute. Like I love all of them. <laughs> They're so great. Mine is a little like crazy. One is happy, one is sad or mad. Um, but I love that. And I love that we have people <laughs> drawing along with us in the chat. Somebody made, Alex made a three had a dog. Um, <laughs> we, um, we have another question from a student. Um, so I am going to queue up that video question from Sophia Grace uh, BB, a seventh grader in Bangkok, Thailand. Wow. Um, so she is going to ask her question. Hi, I'm Sophia Grace. I live in Bangkok, Thailand. My question is, if you weren't an author illustrator, what would you be? Ooh. Ooh. So if you were not an author or illustrator, what would you be? And while we are talking about that, let us, I'm just looking through the chat here, um, make a three-headed 
gorilla swinging mm -hmm. through the jungle. It's a lot of multi-headed uh, things that- It's a radioactive, are... it's a radioactive <laughs> rainforest. Yes, it's a radioactive <laughs> rainforest. All of our animals have multiple heads. So, um, so let's see, we're doing a three-headed gorilla swinging through the, the rainforest and we're answering the question, what would we be if we weren't an author and illustrator? Um, and Loris, do you want to uh, start us off? Yeah, that's such a tough question. But um, well, lately we've been, I have a um, cactus garden. So I've been really into just kind of planting cactus and, and like other things like that. So maybe some type of botanist of some sort or something mm. to deal with kind of learning about plants because I just like, I just love going to plant nurseries and just kind of picking up a new plant to try to plant into our garden. So maybe something like that. That's, that's awesome. And it perhaps makes sense. I mean, you've done a lot of like books on like creatures and natural things. Um, uh so perhaps that is influencing your choice as yeah well. i think so i think so um erman what do you think oh i would be unemployed now i'm just kidding um, <laughs> i uh i would be doing something boring i mean i i would probably be doing graphic <laughs> design again but uh i i don't have the attention span to do any real job uh I, I, I don't know, maybe something in advertising. <laughs> I, I would like to stay in something creative for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, yes, I would say advertising. <laughs> and Tanya, what do you think? Um, I would love to be a dancer. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I've always danced and not professionally, obviously, not even close to being professional, but um, I would love to, to be a dancer and perform on stage and that would be just amazing. <laughs> that, that is amazing. Wow. I would get stage fright, I think. <laughs> um, I don't even know what I would be if I wasn't an illustrator. I guess the boring answer would be I, I would still be working in advertising. <laughs> you hook me up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know. What? You know what? I would be a dog walker. That's what I would be. <laughs> that, that sounds like a lot of fun. I, I would like to do that. I love dogs and I like walking. It's nice to be outside. That sounds like yeah. a great job. I, I'd be a dog, dog walker. Okay, this was a hard one. I don't know. My gorillas don't really look like gorillas. Um, how did you guys do, Tanya? It looks like yours. Wait, is your gorilla holding its third head? Yeah, because it's Halloween, <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't fit the third head. I said, you know what? Let's make it that he's holding it. <laughs> Well, it, you're right. It is almost Halloween, so um, <laughs> I love that. That's that's awesome. And Erman, uh, what about you? And he's just uh, happy to be here. You know, he has a lot of personality. They are in sync. I think they also want to be a dancer. You know? <laughs> they do look like they're dancing. They yeah, like they're they're dancing. In the oh, nice. Room in the middle of their their show <laughs> i love put it some, i'll put some music <laughs> yeah some are they singing too yeah the it's a problem with acoustics you know in between the three of them the other ones you know like yeah they just shout in my ear you know it, it, it's a whole thing you know you don't want to get into it <laughs> <laughs> i love it um Loris, how about yours yeah, I found that drawing a three-headed gorilla is really hard, so I don't think my anatomy is correct, but I was able to draw their faces. Um, the middle one's really upset, that one, apparently, and they're just kind of swinging around. I love how graphic it is, and I'm impressed with how nice it looks. Mine, mine 
<laughs> is like a whole mess. Um, okay, let's see what else we have. Um, who no else? more, no more multi heads. <laughs> okay, no, no more multi heads. I, I have heard you. <laughs> We'll, we will leave the radioactive um, for us for a moment, but we're gonna we're gonna stick with some monkey business, I think. Um, now, I don't know how this belongs in a rainforest. However, I did see that somebody. I don't know if they wanted us to draw it or they were just talking about it, but it seems like a good idea. Let's draw a banana limo. Like a limousine <laughs> banana. That That's seems awesome. like fun, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. um, something a little bit different. Maybe it came from the rainforest. Maybe there are like giant, in our radioactive rainforest, maybe there are giant bananas. And so they harvested them and they turned them into a limousine. <laughs> um, and while we're doing that, we have another student question um, from Sarah C., third grade from Texas. And she oh, is wondering, how do you get ideas about what to write or draw? Where do you get your ideas? Mm -hmm. So let's start um, with Erman on this one. Or wait, did I start? Well, we're going to start with you anyways, because I have already lost who went first before. Uh, that's OK. We'll just pick on you. Go ahead. No, no. <laughs> uh, where do I get my ideas from? Well, it helps to be weird, you know? Um, but I think uh, for me, I just write down anything that comes to mind, whether it's, you know, bad joke, uh, funny premise, um, you know, like a what if situation. Uh, the other day I had an idea about, uh, I said to myself, orange and, and, and orangutan, they like kind of similar. So I drew an orange Oh, that's a good one. And then, you know, I... I or you know dreams help to conversations with friends but the, i think the important thing is to write them down you know and then when you don't have ideas you look into your sketchbook and you say okay so a banana a limousine and then you you just draw it i i think there's you know from from my imagination basically is what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. no that's that's great uh tanya what about you um, I think just from your everyday life, um, yeah, you should uh, sometimes even the things that are really common to you or you don't even think that they're special, you can make them really special. So, so yeah, always have a, a notebook or something to write your ideas, especially in the middle of the night, because that's when mm -hmm. most of my ideas come. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. Your, your life is full of ideas. Good answer. Um, Lurius, what about you? Yeah, I'm very similar. Um, so yeah, everyday life, just kind of either if it's going to a movie or going to the bookstore, going to the market, sometimes you get ideas. Um, I always try to I always try to write things down as well. If, if I don't have a notebook, then I'll put it in my phone, in my notes app, and maybe come back to it later. Um, certain color combinations kind of inspire me. So I'll take pictures of colors and then just kind of re remember, or if I like a plant, or it's just, yeah, things in life definitely inspire me and, as well. So. Awesome. Yeah, same here. I, I also keep a sketchbook that I just like put everything in, stupid doodles, uh, fun ideas. Um, also, I don't know if anybody was watching me draw, but I just messed up. And that's why we color things in. <laughs> uh, the best part about drawing is that you can make mistakes and then try and fix it. And maybe nobody was watching and I just outed myself, but <laughs> that's okay. It's good to share that we all make mistakes, right? I don't know yeah. if my I don't know if my limo looks much like a limo, but that's okay. Um, I also why forgot don't... to stretch my limo. <laughs> I know I forgot. That's I uh, I should have. I forgot about the limo, yeah. A really, really long one. Like it should have been the whole. Yeah. Oh, a snake riding a banana limo. <laughs> Maybe I should add a snake to mine. Here I'm. I'm Mine looks like a canoe now, but um, 
Erman, do you want to show your your limo? Yeah, yeah. My my, it's, it's not ripe, so that's why it's not the limo yet. So <laughs> <laughs> once it once it matures, uh, it becomes a limo. Oh, smart! smart. Yeah, there you go. So we have the monkey driving the the limo, and I like to think that when the exhaust pipe it uh, drops uh, banana peels. <laughs> it's, like, That's funny. Driving. I also try to fix it with adding more more room <laughs> behind, but uh, it's good to make mistakes. We, we, we learn from mistakes. Sometimes, second, learn, sometimes the rest of years come from mistakes. Yeah. I agree. I don't think my second limo banana is any better than my first, but that's okay. <laughs> Sometimes you have to draw things like a hundred times before you you get to the the right True. answer. True. Tanya, what is what is uh your uh banana lim limo? It's that's a cool. Uh, it's just a banana limo, but <laughs> since it curves, you know the wheels start getting bigger in the front, yeah. and then there's a little mouse driving. <laughs> I love that. That's great. Yeah. For the rainforest, is four by four. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you need a four by four limo yeah, for the rainforest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> any any banana limo driver knows that. Yep. <laughs> uh, Larissa, what about yours? All right. I so I drew a ban my. This is my banana limo, but I drew myself driving it with my dog sitting in the back and all my other friends and family. Just oh, wow. It's a, it's a party limo. It's a party nice. limo. That's <laughs> awesome. I'm impressed by your little characters. I like barely managed <laughs> to draw the limo myself. So, uh, I mean, this, I guess it's a car sort of thing. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I've never done a car book. Uh, publishers come at me. Obviously this is a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this was really fun. And then, um, I love, uh, I love how everybody approached this rather strange, uh, this rather strange prop that was so different than all the animals and whatever that we were trying to, to switch from like angular, angular mechanical to, uh, or from natural to angular mechanical. Yeah. My brain was not in the right place. Okay. So we have another question. Um, this one, uh, is from, um, Harold Aff in six, from six, in sixth grade from California. Mm -hmm. And he is asking if you love making books, which of course we do. Um, do you like reading books? And so I think I know what everybody is going to answer, but maybe I'll be wrong. <laughs> um, Luis, what, what do you think? Do you like reading books? Uh, it's, uh, so when I was growing up, reading was always difficult for me. So I would say like when I was young, I wasn't a reader, but I feel like now just kind of being in the um, literary world, I'm more tempted to start reading friends books and like other books and listening to audio books is a new thing that I've started picking up. So that's my answer. <laughs> Tanya, what do you, uh... um, I love, I love reading books. <laughs> uh it was uh since i was a little girl i think books were very special to me uh so yeah i love reading books my favorite kind of books is middle grade books because they're they can be about anything and they can be magic uh, real they're just fun and um i don't have so much time right now to read books because i have a little baby so he doesn't let me do anything <laughs> i know how that is they they can be hard like that yep. <laughs> Erman, how about you do you like yeah. uh reading books yeah yeah um I, my love for for reading uh, started with the comics and the newspapers mm. the the comic strips i love comic strips i started collecting them and and i am very drawn towards like the graphic novels and 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 stuff like that. And, and if not, I, I like reading. I, uh, I guess I'm more curious now about books when I, as when when I was a kid. Uh, I enjoy more like, you know, like the facts and, and reading, learning stuff, history more now than, than when I was younger, but uh, definitely love books. Awesome. 
I also love books. You can probably see right behind me. There's a lot of them. Um, so we are running out of time. So I thought we would do one more question and one more prompt. Um, I, ooh, they're such good ones though. Um, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, no. These are all one, uh, one headed. But, <laughs> um, oof. you know what? There's three prompts, and I can I ask each one of you to draw one of those three prompts because they're all really good. Two of them are related. <laughs> so, eight the eighth graders at uh Kettering Middle School would you would like uh let's see Larice to draw a jaguar in a strawberry Ooh, I love it um a seventh grader from WSTA would like let's say Erman to draw a leopard in a blueberry so those are our two are related um, it'll be interesting to compare those two. And then, um, Tanya, if you would like to draw a seventh grade student, Aiden from Chelsea, would like you to draw a lion wearing a tutu. And since you like cats, <laughs> that seems like a perfect ending. Um, and Randy wants a dog and cat mix, so I will draw that um, <laughs> so that we have um, so that we have four prompts trying to get to everybody's like amazing suggestions. And while we're doing that, we will um, have one last, well, two two last questions um, that we will combine. One, your favorite snack to eat while drawing. That's the easy oh. one. <laughs> and then, um, what advice? What 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 is um, good advice uh, that you might give to some of the young artists that are um, that are in the audience tonight or today today? Um, so. Um, let's start with Tanya. Um, what's your favorite snack while drawing? Anything gummy. <laughs> you know, that's, chips, I, I love gummy things. Chocolate. Oh, oh um, yummy. Anything yeah. that's yummy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the second question was? Um, what, what's some advice to, would you give to, um, any artists that are in the audience, um, okay. to encourage them or, um, just good advice to, to get started. Just draw, draw every day. And just don't, don't worry if you mess up. It's part of learning illustration and it's messing up is really fun because you find really interesting things. Um, so that's my advice. Just have fun and enjoy it and love it. <laughs> that is very good advice. And I also like all sorts of snacks like that too. Erman, what about you? What is your snack of choice while drawing? And what advice might you have for um, artists in the audience today? Uh, I like to eat a lot of uh, snack granola bars. Uh, I try to stay away from candy because I love candy too much. Uh, <laughs> And my advice for the kids um, who, who want to be illustrators, is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, have, have some sort of plan, obviously, you know, but I think explore, explore everything, draw with anything, uh, look for your style, have fun. Like uh, Tanya said, draw every day. It's it's very important. And don't listen to people. People will say that, oh, I don't like this. Don't listen to that, even if it's your mom, because if you enjoy it, <laughs> I think that's the most important thing, like that you enjoy it. Because everybody's going to have an opinion about your work. But again, just, yeah, draw, keep drawing, enjoy it, and have fun with it. That's very good advice. Mm -hmm. And Loris, oh, favorite those snack are all drying. And... Okay. My favorite snack. So Trader Joe's has these dried mangoes that I absolutely love. And they are just dangerous to be around because I will go through the whole package in like one sitting. I am familiar um, but with those, those are my, yeah. And so those are my favorite snacks. 
Um, as far as a, an advice, I, those are really good advices. And I just want to kind of piggyback off of those and just say, like, just be curious and follow the things that interest you. If you want to learn how to draw a specific thing, um, just look, research it, go to the library um, and just be curious and follow those initial instincts of wanting to learn and do things. Um, yeah, I think a lot of the things that I've been into came from just being curious. Like I, I love being very hands-on and trying to figure something out, even if it's like woodworking or something, like I, I'm curious to do that, or I want to try ceramics. I want, like, that sounds just always being curious and kind of using that to drive your yourself. That, that is all very good advice. It sounds like curiosity, persistence, keep drawing and draw every day. And also don't listen to anybody when they say that you can't do it. Just do it anyways and, um, and keep going. So we've now reached the end of our time with everybody. Thank you so much for coming, for drawing with us. It's been so fantastic. Let's hold our last drawings up to the, um, to the camera so that everybody can see our dog cats, our, oh, our poor little jaguar drop in a strawberry i can't remember which was which yeah but, i had the strawberry <laughs> yeah and then the leopard and the blueberry the the leopard and the blueberry looks happy the jaguar and the strawberry looks a little upset he's so, eating um, his way out <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and the tutu wearing lion just looks very happy <laughs> my my cat is unhappy my dog <laughs> is is uh you know normal dog cat personalities right yeah. Yeah. um <laughs> So thank you so much for coming here and, and drawing with us and giving us props and asking us questions. And thank you, Loris, Herman, and Tanya for your amazing drawings and answers. Um, uh, yeah, thank you so much for attending the Lungs of Our Planet Illustrator Draw Off with our radioactive rainforest um, at the <laughs> Latinx Kid Lit Book Festival. It's been so great to be with you today. Um, I'm so glad so many of you could join us. So goodbye. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys.